After watching Sons of Anarchy, we're obsessed with how cool and badass biker culture is. Alright, we wouldn't like to be on the FBI's most wanted list, but riding a Harley Davidson in a stylish black leather jacket sounds pretty awesome. Members of the Hells Angels are widely considered to be part of an organized crime syndicate. In the United States, the general fascination with biker gangs comes with their outlaw status. Even in popular culture, it's very hard to separate members of a biker gang from criminal activities such as drug distribution or extortion. But hey, that's not true. Well, not all the time at least. The truth is that there are many myths and legends about gangs like Hell's Angels. Many biker clubs slash gangs have different chapters, leaderships, and codes of loyalty. For some members of Hell's Angels, their day might just start with making some sort of drug deal in a shady underground club. But for many members, their mornings are as plain as it gets. Yep, that means a bowl of cornflakes, a steaming cup of coffee, some banter with their partners and children, and finally, leaving for their jobs. Now, technically, many gang members choose to lead a double life. If you look it up on the internet, you'll find many stories of children who discovered their dad's dark secret as a Hell's Angels biker. And after playing hide-and-seek and operating some solid covert programs, no one is as well-versed as them in living a secret life. Their secret life is mostly lived under an official, legal Hells Angel title or a nickname. And of course, riding a Harley Davidson is a must for most of the chapters. Certain members and higher-ups of the Hells Angels start their day with a clubhouse or a bar meeting. Other than riding recreationally, this biker gang loves to drink and smoke weed. Well, who doesn't? Well, that happens. My brain says, get drunk and high and maybe you'll work it out. And I didn't. I still don't know what I'm going to do with Jacob, but we got fucked up on hash tokes and shooters. But believe it or not, members are not allowed to drink or smoke up during chapter meetings. Now, let's talk about what exactly goes down in the chapter or club meetings. Remember when we went to primary school and those awful mixers or social gatherings were mandatory to attend? Well, supposedly such mixers were there for you to make friends. Now, if it was that easy, we would have never had to eat lunch at the loser table, right? Club meetings for the Hells Angels are just like a primary school mixer. But there's much less awkwardness and more tough talk. These meetings are important in ensuring that members keep up with their brotherhood and fraternity. But other than socializing, club meetings are where the actual business goes down. A typical meeting agenda would like a charge sheet from their local police station. Did the members acquire some expensive drugs to sell? How many police raids were dodged? How many snitches ended up in ditches? And the million dollar question, quite literally, how much money did the chapter make? Now of course, not all meetings look like a scene straight out of a Hollywood movie. This super exclusive and sometimes super criminal biker group does more good for their community than we realize. Shocked yet? Coming up next, is it true that Hells Angels is just a criminal biker group? Now if you ask any law enforcement agency, such as the US Department of Justice, you'll only get to hear some awful stuff about Hells Angels. The criminal allegations go as far as running prostitution wings involving minors and cross-border sex trafficking. And if there's an outlaw group credited for widening the manufacturing of meth, it's Hell's Angels. Not to mention their most profitable venture is distributing cocaine. Yep, it's a real-life Breaking Bad situation. A business big enough that it could be listed on the Nasdaq goes belly up. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. But make it more Harley Davidson and leather patches. But there are always two sides to the same coin. Now, of course, members of the Hells Angels are all very badass with some serious anger issues. But what if they tell you that their soft side is equally dominant? Many first-hand witnesses of the Hells Angels' dominance tell some fascinating stories. In many ways, this notorious biker gang was also the protector of their societies. They kept petty crimes such as theft or shoplifting at bay, and also made sure that kidnapped children were returned home safely. In cases where the police didn't go out of their way to help the citizens, Hell's Angels would step in. 
Not only do they keep rival external gangs in check, but they also make sure to keep their communities generally crime-free. In fact, many chapters of Hell's Angels are very much the champions of community service. They're known to visit children's hospitals with some pretty cool gifts, contribute to important fundraisers, and provide manpower for communal efforts like plantation drives. Now, if that's not a picture-perfect life of a model citizen, then what is? Of course, their criminal activity is inexcusable, but Hell's Angels surely knows how to give back to the community in quite meaningful ways. So when everything is said and done, their only contribution to society isn't just inspiring some A-grade shows like Son of Anarchy. And we're definitely not complaining. Now let's talk about what life looks like for the new members, or the ones who are desperate to join the club. Now it's pretty obvious that the Hells Angels don't believe in horizontal hierarchies or collaborative workplaces. In fact, if they had an HR department, the daily number of complaints citing hostile work environments would be off the charts. So there are two ways you can join the club. How do you get into the Hells Angels? <clears throat> I, so I, I signed up at a little gym back. There was two guys in there, and, and they were involved in a motorcycle club called the Hells Henchmen, okay. which we ended up, oh, that group became the Hells Angels. Got we it. started the first chapter in the Midwest. Chicago was through us. The first way is quite straightforward. Ask an established member to sponsor you in front of the higher-ups, and that's it. After some thorough background checks, you'll be initiated into the program. And the next thing you know, you're grabbing burgers for your bosses, cleaning their bikes, or at the very least, making some drinks here and there. Well, the second way requires you to make some effort. Now, of course, you don't just show up to the club's hangout spot and ask for a membership card. Not only will you get laughed at, but you'll also be banned from the club after receiving a punch or two. Instead, try lingering around the club's hangout spots. Make some friends here and there. Get them to trust you. You know, I you befriend a really cool DJ or a bouncer to get you into some cool yet exclusive parties, just like that. Now, if the members start to trust you, they'll make you run some errands, like procuring a payment or getting food for a meeting. If you have some unique talents or contacts, such as mechanical skills, things might just get easy for you. You see, Hell's Angels require some extraordinary talent to ensure that their Harley Davidsons remain the main character of the show. Now, after you've passed some tests, you'll be asked to become a prospect. This process is called prospecting, and this is your one-way ticket to the club. This oath is more sacred than any religion. It's bound by blood and brotherhood. And as much as these promises seem metaphorical, Hell's Angels means business. Even then, it will take you years to get full access to the club and that infamous Deathhead patch. 